we're getting closer to the season, so now everyone's talking about starting fives, who's the king of the East and whatnot. So Paul George was on NBA TV, I believe, during media day, and he talked about um, kind of the hierarchy uh, in the Eastern Conference. What's your view on where the Sixers fit in this landscape? I, I think we're top three um, for sure in the East. Got to be, you know, respect, respect, uh, respectful. Um, to Boston, be respectful to, to New York. They put a, a heck of a unit out together. Um, Boston is Boston. They're champions, brought their whole team back, so they're going to be tough. But I think we fit right into that mix. Um, I still don't think there's anyone that can guard Joel and B. Um, so that's like a trump card that we have for sure. Um, but I, I think, you know, through and through, our roster is pretty set to play around Joel and play off Joel and, and, and be you know, a, a compliment to his game. So I like our chances. I like our chances. And you, I mean, but the East is stacked. I mean, you still got to look at Milwaukee. Uh, Indiana's up and coming. Miami's always in the mix. Um, there's still a lot of East teams that, that would give you some run. Really great answer. Really good breakdown from George. Oh, hey, man. He's, a, he's on his podcast. He's, he's an analyst. Dude. Yes, he's following. Hey. And he was the NBA ESPN analyst during the playoffs. I mean, and someone who's like talked about this on multiple shows and, and his own show, like you could just tell, right? And they say he studies uh, uh, Stephen A. Smith, and I forgot who else, but he he studies a lot of different analysts because he wants when he retires, he wants to be a, an analyst, and he'll be pretty good at it. Um, so obviously, I want to. I'm curious to hear how everyone kind of agrees with PG. So since the rosters are all but complete until the start of the season. How would you guys rank the top four in the East as of right now? Also, you can't forget the cat news, too. That just happened. So, Yeah. Um, I mean, Boston has to be number one. I mean, they just won the championship. I think <clears throat> um, based on your preference, two, through two, three, and four um, is, the, is the Knicks, Sixers, and um, Bucks. You kind of depending on the day in your order. Um, if you're going by history, as far as what the guys collectively have, have done, you probably say um, the Sixers or the Knicks. Um, but if you base it on last season, um, you can easily say the Knicks is probably two. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, with the, And the moves that they made. Uh, most people feel that they they're better than they were last season. Um, so I think those four teams are going to push for that number one seed. I think Boston's really going to be pushed, uh, yeah. unlike last season. So we'll see. It's going to be very interesting. I, I think the um, parity is there, and and it'll always be a team that that's outside of those four that's 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 hanging around. You know, Miami could be that team. Cleveland could be that team. Um, yeah. You know, it's always somebody else that's kind of, you know, late in the season, they either number three seed or four seed or right behind the four seed. So it's, it's going to be interesting. You got to win your home games and win the games you're supposed to win. And if you're going by team success, when you, you mentioned team success, you could make a case for Bucks being number two because they actually yes. won in the last few years, right? So yeah. you have like individual players, Philly. Last season, Knicks, team success, Bucks. So yeah. you can make a case for all three of them. Yeah. Um, I love George's answer, and I like that he didn't take those teams lightly, right? Um, I think. Yeah, I mean, a, but he did say top three. So who is he not including? Sound like the sound like the Bucks actually. It's not like the Bucks. He came back. You say you can't forget the Bucks after he already said, "I don't want to be disrespectful to New York or Boston." So it sounds like you already gave both. Well, I mean, you, you, yeah, of course, because you're saying the two teams that put you out and the team that you can't seem to beat. Yeah. 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 So, um, I, so I, obviously, I, I, Celtics number one. Two through four is very interesting. I'm, I'm going – us at two because I think the Knicks have more core turnover than we do. And they have to, I think, figure more out because George has been the number two for the last, what, four or five years. Um, 
But you got Bridges, who is their number one in Brooklyn, and Cat, who has spent. I don't, I don't agree with that because Bridges, the majority of his career, he's been a three or four. Before Brooklyn, sure, yeah, he was. Um, but he's they like, didn't really, but they didn't really use him like a one per se. I mean, he was just kind of put into that, but they didn't really showcase him like the traditional ones in in the league. Like he he didn't get the load that Brunson got from the Nets. No, he did. He, he had a higher that, usage. Yeah, because. I mean, he, so I'm just saying, like, I think I think from his perspective. He he is easier for him to fit a role than it is Paul. I think he's more comfortable with this kind of role. No, I'm saying for him to fit into a role than Paul and be more effective. Um, so I oh I, then, then Paul, you're saying Paul Paul George. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, because we're we're saying Paul has been two, but he hasn't been three. Bridges That's has right. been three or four. Yes, <laughs> maybe five <laughs> when he's in Phoenix. And Cat has been a two, but he's been a one for the majority of his career, though. He's been a two with the most success. Yes, yes, that is that's true. Um, I that's why I think two is so close between us and Knicks. I just I think our most important pieces from last year remain, though, whereas. The Knicks really just like flipped it all and they lost some of their depth while doing it. We actually flipped and gained more depth than we had last year, which is crazy. Um I mean, but you're assuming you're assuming that they're gonna play that use their depth. <laughs> they never do. <laughs> I mean in the season we might have to just because No, I'm saying the Knicks. I'm saying you're assuming that they're gonna use their depth. Oh they oh, don't oh, use it. Well, I mean, I mean they, well, they're, they, they're, they're saying they their starters because Randall was saying, out, No, but they still have the guys that came off the bench that played well when they finally started to play them. Um, well, so I, I just, I just think, I just think it's, I think it's Boston. I think teams are real close. I think teams are have gotten closer to Boston. It's just the the, the way that Boston dominated last year and won the championship. You can't put them anywhere but one but i do think that the teams have gotten closer to them i just don't i just don't think right now i know to, sitting here today it's hard to pick two yeah. through four and maybe even harder to pick five through eight yeah, um, yeah. so i just i'm gonna just kind of let it simmer right now and <laughs> kind of spend some more time and see how training camp kind of turns out um and because there's a lot of questions that, that still have to be answered. I mean, the Bucks, like I said, they. I wouldn't be surprised were, if the Bucks they, were they, too. That's what I'm saying. That they had a considered quote unquote down year from losing in the first round. But, you know, Giannis didn't really play. But when he was in there, if he's in there, like, just like we hope Joel's healthy, we hope they hope he's healthy. When Joel's healthy, we're different. When he's healthy, they're different. Yes. So. Um, I, I, I just firmly feel like I feel like any of these teams can pass Boston. I think that any of these teams can end up fourth or fifth. The one thing, as if I was a Bucks fan, I'd be worried about is just the continued health issues in Middleton because that's someone who's who needs to be close to what he was for them to be up there again. And they'll still be top four, I think, whether he's banged up or not. That's yeah. how good Lillard and, and uh, Giannis are, but for Middleton needs to be somewhat healthy this year, pretty healthy for them to. They, 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 they um, I think Trent's a really interesting signing for them. Good signing. Um, and then um, Dame has to be better. If he's better, better, yeah. You know, that's you can't never count them out. What what do you make of the the cat signing, um, Eric? Because I, mean, I know Paul George mentioned in that quote. I I still don't think there's anyone that can guard Joel. That's one thing a lot of Sixers fans are saying is, like, who's going to guard Joel? Cat's going to guard him. Um, what, what do you make of Cat uh, and, and just their, their lineup uh, in, in general? I mean, who guarded Joel last year? Was it Hardenstein? It was a combination of Hardenstein, Achua, and even Ananobi. Yeah. So so 
um, only Hardenstein's the only one that's not there, correct? Where did he go? Okay, see. Okay, see. So he's the only one that's not there, correct? Yeah. Is, did they resign with Chua? I don't think so. Yeah, still I, I think the is back. Is he? Oh, is he? Yeah, I believe he's there. Just... I mean, he's still listed as their. Yeah, he's still there. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm about ninety yeah. percent sure he's still yeah. there. Yeah. They, they resigned him. Yeah. They resigned him late, though. It wasn't like during the free agency flurry. It was like later in the summer. They resigned him July. Yeah, I think July. Yeah. yeah, late July. Yeah, I was gonna say it was later than the initial first day. Um. So that's what I'm saying. Like they, you know, still got guys, and what, and the guy that didn't play is still there. The one that came in and back up, Mitchell, Robinson, right? Yeah, that Mitchell was the original Robinson. starter before, yeah. um, in front of, before Hardenstein. Yeah, who could do a decent job on Joel. Yeah, so I, I mean, I, my my concern would be more um, of how we gonna match up with Cat if he's at the five in that pick and roll or we already struggled to guard Brunson in the pick and roll. Now you put cat in that pick and roll, like we're not going to switch. So what are we going to do? How are we going to defend that? Um, yeah. So, so just like we, we got issues. I mean, I mean, just like we can cause issues. I mean, they can cause something too. So that's why I say it's, it's, it's up in the air It's matchups. You're going to see how teams play against each other, trying to figure it out and, and it's all about the matchups. And if you can't can't figure it out, that team's going to have your number, and, and hopefully you won't have to see them in the playoffs. Because as of right now, um, you know, Knicks put us out. So they're co- very confident against us out, out the gate. No matter what move we made, they're very confident against us. That's true. Yeah. yeah. And in their eyes, they got better. Yeah. Yeah. And a couple of victories in Philadelphia too with that with that group too. So yeah. they definitely got their uh, confidence.